what a game we have on tap. This College World Series has been outstanding. Tight games, and now the LSU fan base is all fired up, as are the Demon Deacons. These two teams are the only two that have claimed to be number one all year. The beat is ready to go. We have what feels like a finals series playing out early at this College World Series. LSU and Wake Forest ready to do battle. Welcome back to the Men's College World Series. If you're curious about the journey for Wake Forest becoming the number one team in the country, you can pinpoint back to two years ago. In 2021, this team went 20 and 27. After that season, head coach Tom Walter, he gathered together that freshman class. It was guys like Brock Wilkin and Rhett Louder. And together they said, listen, it's on you guys to build this team chemistry. I feel like our team is fractured right now. So they started having get-togethers. They went on team trips. They read books together. This year, that book was Dan Brown Legacy. And in there, they asked, what is your why? So they came up with a team motto to answer that question. It is, make them feel you. But that's not just make your opponent feel you. It's everyone around you. It's your teammate, your friends, your family, your school. And since that meeting two years ago, all they've done since, more than double their win total and make a trip to Omaha. That's a good why right there, and here's a good reason they're here, too. Josh Hartle, who has been outstanding, as has the entire Wake Forest pitching staff. Kyle, what's the latest on Josh Hartle? I mean, just kind of pick your poison with this pitching staff. For Hartle, over the course of the year, it's it's a fastball that well, touch 90, maybe a little bit more, but it's elite control, and it's elite swing and miss. He's got a chance to break the one and only Mike Buddy single-season strikeout record tonight, which currently stands at 138 for the year. Pitchability left-handed with real stuff. 314 team batting average, 135 home runs for Jay Johnson's offense, 594 runs. Our Capital One batting order looks like this. Eduardo's already talked about Cruz and White at the top. Travinsky has been very, very good. And they got a huge game from Brayton Jobert in the first one when he went double, triple homer. And that was the big part of a victory for them. LSU is 17 and 5 against the lefty starter, which of course, as you see, Hartle is. And here comes Cruz in the first pitch of the game <gasps> on the corner, strike one. Six foot out of Longwood, Florida. And another good breaking ball that's in there for a swing and a miss. Cruz on base percentage, 573, two in the NCAA. Second in runs, third in batting average, fourth in walks, and he will not offer it back. Major League fans and teams that have early picks in the draft, this guy's going to likely be one, two, or three. Paul Skeen's likely to be one, two, or three. Swing and a miss and a start for Hartle with a punch out. So for Hartle this year, against right-handers, this has been his best pitch. How about an OPS on the curveball of 163 this year for the left-hander? He's got some opposite splits to where he's really tough against righties, especially when he gets that one going, and he got it going right away. Doesn't get easy at all. Tommy White, third baseman, 375 on the season. That's up and away, 1-0. and And it's really not easy, not only for the hitters dealing with the shadows, but also the left fielders around this time. Something right in their eyes. You good? Yes, sir. Thank you. Two balls, no strikes. Hurdle is a kid that grew up in the shadows of Wake Forest University, decided to stay home. We've all seen stories, the pressure that generally brings. As you see the left fielder trying to guard the sun, he's handled it beautifully, but now behind 3-0 to White. And a strike. It's interesting. White hits 257 against lefties and 438 against righties. He had two homers in the Super Regional opener against Kentucky. Hit! Three balls, two strikes. White was ready to walk to first. The wind, which is a huge factor all the time at Charles Schwab Field, has been blowing in most of the day, and it still is, and it's a pretty stout wind. Roll over to the third baseman, Wilkin. He fields and fires. Two down. Fundamental baseball right there by Wilkin at third base. Coming in hard, understands the speed of White. These two teams are well-versed 
and prepared for each other. On his toes, doesn't hesitate whatsoever, picks it up beautifully between the knee and the, and the shin area, is able to throw a strike over to Kurtz. First one of Trey Morgan is down. It's a good battle by Hartle, too. He was behind 3-0, and and he got White to roll one over. Morgan's the first baseman. He's the junior. And it's a high chopper to second base. Justin Johnson and a 1-2-3 inning for Josh Hartle. We'll come back when the Wake Forest Demon Deeks come to the plate for the first time. The nickname of this group is Wake Forest because of their ability to hit. Pierce Bennett is highlighted there, Eddie, with a 560 batting average. In, in order to take the pressure off Kurtz and Wilkin, Bennett has to get on base. If he's able to get on base, work the counts just like Tommy Hawk does at the top. Wake Forest is going to be pretty tough to contend with. Got Floyd. really good stuff, man. I, and for Rev, for Ty Floyd, I think the biggest thing tonight, and, and Jay Johnson talked about it today. He's going to give up fly balls. He gave up 15 home runs this year. A, this ballpark, usually that's fine. And he's going to elevate it at roughly 94, 95 miles an hour. This is exactly what he wanted. You show up at the ballpark and you see this win. It's exactly what he wants because it generally, I mean, we've talked about this ballpark playing so big. Yeah. It doesn't play that big unless the wind is growing, blowing like this. Wind starts blowing like this, totally different place, and it plays right into his hand tonight. Fifty-seven percent of his outs are fly ball outs, and one of the things that uh, Wake Forest learned in their first game is not to play their outfield so deep. As we look around the outfield now, LSU's with Pearson Cruz and Joe Bear, they are very much in, and it is. It's virtually impossible to hit a ball out to center field. You can go down the lines if you're going to leave, but center field is a graveyard. And Tommy Hawk will lead things off. He's got seven long balls, but a 353 batting average. And Floyd's first one. High and away, ball one. Sophomore of Oak Island, North Carolina. The table setter, the grinder. Use all those baseball hey. euphemisms. He's that guy. One ball, one strike. Right down the middle with 94 behind it. Now he's going to be in protect and serve mode. So Thompson at short. Any grounder hit to him, he's better rush because Tommy gets out of that box in a hurry. Second team all ACC, a regional all tournament team guy. He homered in both the super regional wins against Alabama, and that was an offensive explosion from Wake Forest. 1 2 off speed popped up. Shallow center, the shortstop's out there, and he is under it. Jordan Thompson makes the play. First changeup we've seen tonight from Ty Floyd against lefties, primarily fastball changeup. I'll show you a few breaking balls against righties. Almost the exact opposite, primarily fastball slider, but to all he's going to be fastball heavy, probably 75% of the time tonight. As when the Red Sox broke their curse, they were labeled a bunch of idiots. So affectionately, these guys will all say about their teammates, we are strange, we're a bunch of weirdos out there, but we all get along and the coach embraces it and we embrace it. And uh, that fractured stuff Chris was talking about, they all came together, showed some vulnerability, and it has led them to gel into one of the best teams in the country all season long. Two now and O oh to Pierce Bennett. Nope, oh, that's outside three now. Both these teams have dealt with injuries too. Teddy McGraw was going to be a weekend guy for Wake Forest this year. They lost him right before the season started, but yet Wake still has the best ERA in the country. Yeah, walk to Pierce Bennett right here. That's exactly what you do not want, especially with Kurtz and Wilkin in the hole. Get runners on base. You open the first base area as well for Kurtz. Nick Kurtz actually committed as a pitcher, then a two way guy, and now he's just a hitter. And when you ask him, do you miss pitching? Nope. <laughs> nope, not at all. 
huge, huge numbers for the sophomore. This is one of the best hitters in the country. And he's just a sophomore. And we've got two of the best defenders at first base in the country playing in this game between Kurtz and Trey Morgan. 24 home runs, second in the league, only to the guy that's going to hit after him. That's a good one there at 94. And after five straight balls, he throws a strike to even the count one and one. There's a lot of room in that body to grow as well. Did Kurtz, you know, Hawk, your leadoff guy, after Hawk would be retired, he'd walk back to the bench and Kurtz would say, So, what did you see? What, what do they have? I don't know. <laughs> what part <laughs> of the question? The did... He is back in time with an awkward kind of dive back with that left hand. I thought he was going to do the backstroke right at the end. <laughs> Remember, they watered this down pretty heavily before the game. Yeah. Swimming trials are next year. 1 1. That's a good oh. changeup. One ball, two strikes to Kurtz with Brock Wilkin, the third baseman, and his 31 home runs in the on deck circle. Twelve straight weeks. LSU ranked number one in the country. One and two. Oh. Oh. Strike three, and he knew it. I think Nick Kurtz says he's going to go back to back right here. This is what gets it to two strikes. He throws a changeup in there and then comes back. Kurtz is looking for the changeup and he just grabs the number one and throws it right down the middle. That's 94, about belt high. Kurtz was lo looking for something else. First strike out of the night for Ty Floyd. Probably not going to see many of those against the guy who loves that fastball letter high. Brock Wilkin, that is his hot zone. And that is a way guys we've been doing this for years and around this time this is the most difficult time also for hitters to be able to see the ball the shadows are absolutely nasty some guys can pick it up well some can't most of them can and it's still at first after the walk next one to Wilkin and that is one that was up and elevated he's pulled it down the line and it's drifting towards the seats and the wind pushes it even further down the lane. so with those shadows I mean, is it tougher to see spin is it tougher to see everything what, what what makes it the most difficult spin it's really difficult to see spin and when you can't see it you start guessing and right there Kurtz I believe guessed on that change up once again and he was clueless with that 94 mile per hour pitch Check this point of view out. Hey! Where's the spin? The time that you have to make that decision, to be able to say go or no, is minimal. One and two. Bennett stays put. Swing and a miss. 97. Have we seen some velocity this week? Not only Paul Skeens, Floyd to 97. Strikes out Wilkin and Curtis. Paul Skeens, Rhett Louder from Wake Forest, and the first pitch from Partle is in there for strike one. The junior is Hayden Travinsky. And he swings at that. That is a wicked, wicked slider. Partle's got to take, he's, he's got to quicken his pace up a little bit. This is. <laughs> Far too much time going on between pitches. 0 oh, 2 0 oh, 3. That's strikeout number two for Josh Hartle. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, Mike, buddy, I hate to tell you, partner. I, I think you may hold on to that strikeout record for about another hour and 20 minutes tonight if this stuff picks up. Stay over the top of the breaking ball, man. That left on right breaking ball is so good. Guys are not picking it up right now in the shadows, but he will stay with it. Kate okay, Beloso, the designated hitter. And the first pitch to the lefty is down 1 0. It's an interesting splits for Beloso. He's a lefty who hits 425 against lefties and 273 against righties. Keeps that right shoulder in the entire time. Not afraid to get jammed, challenging the lefties to pitch in. And in this level and in the lower levels of pro ball, it is very difficult to get a young pitcher to pitch in. Oh, that's in. 
Oh my. Inside, yeah, Hartle didn't think so, and neither did his catcher Bennett Lee. I think they were right. But the count says three and zero. Oh. Hey. That's better, three and one. After going behind two and zero, oh, Hartle did do what Kyle was kind of alluding to. He actually stepped off the mound. Got those cleats cleaned off, settled things down, but he lost him at three and one. That's a walk in the first base runner for the Tigers. So Jay Johnson, who of course is the head coach of LSU, says there's no team like Wake Forest that makes the decision as a hitter more difficult between what is a strike and a ball. Dugas looks at a strike and what is that referring to Edward is that the tunneling and you don't know which is it a ball or a strike and it takes long to figure it out longer to figure out they hide the ball really well when it comes to delivery and they mix in their pitches well look they have the lab and we'll be talking about the lab as the game goes on and it works to the hitters weaknesses and the pitcher's strength at the same time oh and two in the dirt and a nice job blocking it by Lee. Another good take. Gavin Dukas was struggling and Johnson told us he had to have eye surgery because they couldn't quite figure out why Dugas was not able to put back to ball a skill he's so good at. Stays alive. But one of the Tigers with multiple double digit homers, 16 on the season to go with that 289 average and a 2 2 from the lefty. That's outside. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, for Dugas in the fall, I mean, he was like two for 30 or something with 19 strikeouts. And LSU staff trying to figure out what it was. They sent him to get his eyes checked. He actually had to have a procedure done on his eye, wore a patch for a long time. Since then, the eyesight's come back. Offense has been good. And that's that back to back watch for Hartle here in the second. Guys, I want to introduce you to a guy named Chris Lewis, a.k.a. Codes is what they call him. He is the head of their analytics department, uh, a graduate assistant. He has a team of 20 that really look at everything, uh, especially with the pitching staff. I was talking to him earlier. What is the and you can see Josh Hartle. We wouldn't be where we are without a.k.a. Codes right future ahead. That future is going to take him down to be in Tampa with the Blue Jays organization helping with their pitching staff. I was asking him though, what's the most important stat that people don't realize? And he said a football term, he said time of possession. Really like how much we're able to, you know, time is left when we take off a pitch or time a game. And when you add all that up, you look at our wins, like the amount of time that we're able to do and take off between pitches is a much higher win probability. Yeah, that's that is a huge backstory, and it certainly connects with this guy walking out here, Corey Muscaro, who is the pitching coach for Wake Forest. That lab, the analytics, the biomechanist to biomechanist that we talked with during Game One, it all conspired to create this pitching monster. And let's be honest, Lewis looks like every general manager in yeah. baseball right now. That's yeah, Andrew Friedman right there. I mean, everyone, many, that's the route. <laughs> <laughs> Work in an analytics department in college, create programs. I mean, he's literally the guy behind the programs. He's behind the scouting reports. He talks to the pitchers, the hitters. He hangs at the ballpark all the time. But it's not only that, it's the leadership skill that he has as well. He's able to adapt. There are 20 student analysts on this on this squad, 20. And he has to manage all of them. That right there is leadership. And I think that's why a lot of major league teams are like, Plucking a lot of these student yeah. analysts from Wake Forest and many other universities. Greatest internship you could get. Yeah. But also get you a trip to Omaha, too. That's not bad. Hey, we got a beach ball on the field. We got a beach ball. He also keeps things very close to the vest. I was trying to get any sorts of information. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you. I don't, you know, that's not for public information. He did say that 
also it's a team effort in terms of what stats they look at. Rhett Lauder has his own stat that he wants. Again, couldn't find out what that was, but even, even the pitchers, the hitters, they're so invested in what they get and, and what they're looking at, and it really turned to them. One ball, one strike as Cardinal finds the strike zone again. Back-to-back -back walks. It has been a theme in a College World Series that has had tight games. Those free passes have absolutely come back to hurt teams. And Joe Bear had such a huge opening game. Maybe the guy that LSU wants up here. 1-1 one, one, rolls it to second base. Johnson, Houston, double play. Not the guy they wanted up in that situation. The two walks get erased. And perhaps a pitcher's duel with the wind and the arms on the mound starting to unfold here in Omaha. I think it's only a curse if you let it be a curse. Like I said, we're coming here, we play the game. We're not worried about who we play, not worried about the seeding. It, it doesn't matter the team, we're just coming and playing. It doesn't matter. Someone's got to break it. Someone's going to break it. Am I done here? <laughs> what good? Is that the answer you were looking for? Last question or right. Yep, somebody's <laughs> going to break it. Uh, lunchtime. Miami in 99, the last overall number one to win. We've gone back and forth about why it is such a difficult thing, and perhaps the, the razor-thin difference between number one Wake Forest, number two LSU, it's just not a big difference. It's not like you come in as a one, and in baseball you're going to win ten games in a row. Doesn't happen. Yeah, but you know that they're after you. I came in twice to Omaha, both times as a freshman and a junior as a number one seed. Didn't last too long my junior year. 0 and 2, won the first two my freshman year, and we ended up losing the the next two. It's it's the pressure. It's also the head coaching is different. The coaching is different at this level at this level at the College World Series because there are off days in between. And as a young player, you don't realize what the coaching staff is doing, and you start panicking yourself. Floyd ahead of Johnson, 0-2, and a breaking pitch on the ground is short. Thompson, high throw. Morgan's able to come down in the bag. And look, we're spoiled because when we get here, you have the last 18 standing. The road here is so difficult that, regardless of whether you're number one in the land. It's hardly like a cakewalk to get here. I mean, number one doesn't end up here all the time, let alone get here and try to defend the mountain. We saw that with Tennessee. The last two years. Arkansas two years ago. Arkansas couldn't get here. Tennessee couldn't get here. Yeah, it, it's uh, but for both of these teams, their road relatively the last two weeks has been fairly straightforward. Both got a chance to play at home in regionals and supers. Neither lost a game. Which in itself says maybe there's some separation between the top two teams in the country, having been the only top teams in the country. This is Danny Corona, and he just swung at one that was blue by you. He's 0 2. He has been their hottest hitter, like piping hot. 19 RBIs last five games, two homers against Alabama. Big two RBI hit the other night that helped get him here. I had a conversation with them earlier today. And I asked him, I said, Is your dad here? He said, no, he had to leave. But he'll be watching. His dad instrumental in baseball in New York City. This ball is going to come out of play behind us. Corona was born to two parents that were in high school when he was born. So very, very young and were able to make sure Danny stayed on the straight and narrow, focused him on schoolwork, on baseball. And now his dad's still very much involved in New York City and helping out young kids in baseball. His son just struck out and missed third strikeout for Ty Floyd. It's a great shot there. You know, you focus on that BKP, that Bob Carey pedestrian bridge, but there's a lot of bridges over the mighty Missouri. Hey! I mean, there's more than just that one, but we That's focus a, on that. A, one. This is a busy place, man. Yeah. They have multiple ways to get over there. Maybe the Iowans going to have multiple ways to get here. Oh, to get back over, sure. Just outside to Bennett Lee. He's the catcher. And for all intents and purposes, when he was playing, his coach was leaving. He and about six others on the Demon Deacons team are really close. And he called and said, you guys need a catcher? And you know what? Lo and behold, we do. And just like that, Bennett Lee was the new catcher for Wake Forest. 
And he came into a group in which he knew just about everybody. One, two. Japanese call strike three. Great start, Ty Floyd. Two punch outs in each inning. He's got four, zero, zero across the board through two. 21. How would you rate the first three days so far? Who know. Number one. I don't know how it could be. I mean, I every be. game's tight. Everything's really good. It's we've never had more talent. And there's I don't know, pick a number. Eight to ten first rounders just this year. You look at the first three first rounders the next three years, there's probably 20 of them. That may be light. Jordan Thompson the shortstop Josh Pearson the left fielder and then back to the top for Dylan Cruz who struck out his first time up. Two and oh Ty Floyd's been outstanding hasn't he with that fastball. Yeah. Well, Floyd has leaned on it and Hartle really the only problem so far has just been control. The two base runners of the game were back to back walks in the second for LSU. Hey! Two balls and a strike. Big Forest 282 ERA as a team is a full run better than anyone else. A full run. This is outside three and one. Oh, oh. gets the late call. Wow. Just as difficult as it is wow. for the hitters, it is for the umpires as well. That ball was out of strike. Two two. That is into the mitt. Strike out number three from Hartle. It's the way he started each of the first three innings. Striking out a right hander and striking him out on a breaking ball. Get a gift right there. That gets it to two strikes. And, and you give him a gift and he comes back with a good curveball down and in for Hartle. Three strikeouts here through two and a third. And another beach ball in center field. You mentioned the injury to Teddy McGraw. It was an ACL injury. As good as Hartle is. <laughs> Didn't want to deflate when he first stepped on it. Yeah, and then he crushed it. Solid move. And I, I, I like to just throw it in the back pocket. Let's yeah. play right there. Like you give him one chance, okay? We're gonna throw it back once. But if it, if it shows up again, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna take it. But you disagree. You don't like rules you, at all. You have 21 years of experience here. I think I have like seven, just a third of what you have. It's not a way to endear yourself to the fans, right? Not sure he's trying to do They're that. They're not gonna pitch against him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not sure that the endearing thing is part of his no, his checklist right now. I will say this though, Hartle first hitter in this inning, 2-0. Again, 2-0. He's already been twice in the game 3-0. Oh, let's make that three times in the game 3-0. Needs to bounce back and not give away. Well, he doesn't walk too many. I mean, coming in, he walked just 20 and 96 in the third. Strikeout to walk ratio for the year. Six and a half to one. That's a four pitch walk. He's now walked three in the first three innings. And the number nine hitter is the last guy you want to walk, especially with this batting order. And this guy coming up, Dylan Cruz, whose season average is only 433. Yeah, this team is built, and LSU's lineup is built to get their best hitter up at least five times in a game. And that's why you have them at the top, and then you have White hitting second. He's able to get one double play, and here's the pitch to Cruz, and that's down. But I mentioned Teddy McGraw. You followed that up, the ACL injury. You ask anybody on this Wake Forest team, as good as they were, he was the best by far. Hey! Our staff with Louder and Hartle and everyone else, nobody had the stuff they say that Teddy McGraw had. One one to Cruz. One and two. That's what he got him with the first time that same one. So the curveball's about 82, 83 miles an hour. That was it there. He'll throw a cutter, and he's thrown a few tonight. That one's 87, 88. Cutter's a little bit flatter. Curveball has a little bit more depth. Runner goes on a block. Throw down. It's to the left, and he's in. Good read by Josh Pearson to pick the bag, his second steal of the season. It all starts with the secondary and anticipating balls in the dirt. Your base run, it's exactly what you have to do. Watch Pearson right there, sees it, doesn't hesitate, and forces Lee to make a perfect throw at second. 
Everything to Dylan has been down. Nothing up. Wild pitch on a 2-2, swing and a miss. And Cruz goes back to the bench. He's got a 68 straight game reach base safety streak, and he's now 0 for 2. I, I would be surprised if there is a game this year that Dylan Cruz has struck out the first two of bats of the game. And it's now happened. First two was on a breaking ball. That was on a fastball right there. 90 miles an hour down again. Down, down, down consistently. Now four punch outs in the game for Josh Hart. Tommy White, 97 runs batted in and a runner at second. That just missed. Probably up a couple of inches. That is an impossible pitch to hit and would be a strike, but he's behind 1 0. about Chris Lewis right there I guarantee you he has a lot to do with the way that they are approaching Dylan Cruz at the plate and Tommy White keep the ball down put a wrinkle in it 2 0 pitch to White this is again outside 3 and 0 and he has fallen behind and to get to the numbers going into that at bat Dylan Cruz had a 47 percent whiff rate against left handed breaking ball pitchers. You think that guy right there didn't know that? I think we get a green light special here, three and zero. If he gets when he likes <laughs> on the corner, and that's the second time that White thought he was walked when he wasn't. And you can see a a look from Corey Moser when you see a batter throw a bat like that. The zone's kind of been all over the place so far tonight. This one is a strike, um, but it, it's it's been a little bouncy so far. Steps on third. He's waved. The ball gets by the center fielder. Hawk right to second. He's in there. One nothing LSU. 98. 98 exit velo. 98 runs driven in. 98 was a pretty darn good year for me as well. But this right here, getting back to Tommy White, how about him forgetting about that ball four? Instead of it being called a strike, he goes right back after it, looks for a pitch up, and is able to drive him in, keeping his head up all the time and taking that extra base. Yeah, Hawk was not going to get Pearson at home, but he certainly had the ability to prevent White from getting in a scoring position. Hey. And now he is at second, so a single and an error on Hawk. And LSU draws first. Morgan, that one is towards the seats, and there's going to be no play. Well, the question now, I guess, how important do you think the first run in this game is? Uh, I mean, if early returns are going to continue, I think I think the first run's really important tonight. It's just two innings, but Ty Floyd's looked pretty good on the other side, too, as is Harvard. That's the first hit he gave up all day. It's just the walk got it. One out walk comes around to score. Cesarian so left field better be focused because Trey Morgan with two strikes hits the ball off to left. 0-2, oh, here you go. Good call, and it is over his head. He may have lost it in the sun, and watch Morgan run. White is in. Morgan to third, and the brakes are on there. So Siri came in and then the ball kept going and it appeared as if he may have lost it in the sun. Okay, so experience in this ballpark tells you and history tells you that you can't see the ball when you have the shades on. The problem is this. The shades aren't on. He has them on his hat. And that's a, that's an issue off the bat. You can't see it. You have the shades on. But once it gets above the stands, you have an issue. He has to now decide does he put them on or not? We've talked about this before. So, and you can tell that he's struggling with it. 
there are no more flip downs in today's game. That's what he needs right now. He needs flip downs or he needs to be able to see from above the glasses. And what he has to do, look guys, this is simple. When you have the shades on and he would have them on, I like these that you have on right now. You have them. Aiden Travinsky, strike one with Morgan at third. So an RBI triple credited to Morgan. And the 0-1. Oh, no, dude. All right, really quick, when you're in left field and the sun's right on you, what you have to do, he has, he has the glasses on, he has to look at them like this. He has to put them right here. And when you're looking at the sun, you, this is the way it doesn't bother you, then you flip them up. You go from here, as they hit to you, now you can see when they're over the stands and right into the sun. Why don't you just wear flips? Because they don't have them. These guys, aren't used to, these guys aren't used to them. Let's not forget, most of these stadiums that they play in aren't double-deckers. One and two, that's inside of Travinsky. This is a different beast here. Only Texas A&M right now that I can recall has that double-decker type stadium. But everywhere else, this, three levels. Different beast. Got him there. Picks up the strikeout. That's the fifth. But a big inning for the Tigers and Jay Johnson. They pick up a couple. Tommy White, a big single, knocked in his 98th run. He then moved to second on an error, and then a misplay in left leads to a triple and another run. Tigers, two, Deeks, nothing. Uh, Jay Johnson joining me now. Coach, second time through the order against Hartle, able to plate some runs. What were the adjustments second time through? He's tough. He's got a lot of deception, so it's hard to separate the balls from the strikes. I think we just did a little better job of getting our pitch and getting him up over the plate. Ballpark's playing differently today with the blowing in. You got a guy on the mound who's given up some home runs, but you also got a team that can hit some home runs. You have a preference on how it plays? I'm good with it right now. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jay Johnson coming out of his shell. You're seeing a lot more personality this time with LSU. They're a little different story than when he was with Arizona. He's enjoying his life. And he's certainly liking what Ty Floyd's doing on the mound. Back-to-back -back punch outs. And he's got it all working. That fastball and right there, that changeup at 83. The changeup against lefties is really good for Floyd. He really didn't throw a whole, whole lot to righties, but it's it's been very effective all year against left-handers. It's a series, and there's so many guys out there, and there is one painting the outside corner, using the gloves in the field to try to block the sun. Yeah, they're all struggling. I like what LSU is doing right now defensively in the outfield. If you see if you see the left fielder right here, he moved from this spot. From this spot right here, he moved over here. That's exactly where you need to be in order to be able to get a better angle on anything hit towards straight away left. So he can go to his so he can go to his left and stay away from that direct sunlight. High Floyd has three consecutive strikeouts, five in the game, and five of the last six outs are by strikeout. He's got the nine-hole hitter Barrett Houston, and that's what it looks like. A little higher than the left fielder, but everybody from the second baseman to the shortstop dealing with this sun at this hour. Now they got another hour. Uh huh. Until that sun gets low enough that at least the shadow reaches all the way out to left field. Merrick Houston, one for three in game one. He fouls that back. Remember, Wake Forest trailed game one, and then we had this weather delay because there was lightning within eight miles, even though it was sunny at the field. And they went in, they kind of regrouped. They acknowledged they were playing tight came back out Corona delivered the big hit and they ended up winning that game but they were down and they were not playing Wake Forest baseball all right louder was off that game even though he kept his team in it gave him a chance to win it wasn't his best dealing with a, a virus or some effects of a virus
two one and this one is popped up the right fielder is coming hard Joe Barron he is the one that's going to call everyone off and make the play. And every ball in the air you can tell is a bit of a challenge right now. Not only the sun but a wind at about 15 to 18 miles an hour. Florida is already 2 0. A remarkably intense game last night involving too many trips to the mound and requiring a freshman to come in and try to end the game. And you speak to Kevin O'Sullivan after that game. How is he feeling? Uh, I think he was very relieved. Yeah. The way that it went. <laughs> so they're 2 0. One of these two teams will be 2 0. And you know you get into that losers bracket and you just got to win back to back to back games the road just gets so much more difficult by the Gators are in a great spot on the other side of the bracket. One one to Hawk. That's that beautiful change up. And he's followed up that change up with fastball in the letters. Let's see what he does here. This one into left. Here comes the charging left fielder and Josh Pearson positioned beautifully. Sunglasses on. Catacorn. People will tell you that the College World Series signifies an end to a season. It's all over. They win the championship. But really, it's the start of a season. And it's the best season of them all. Summer. It's really hard to argue with that. It is the best season of the summer. And so Tennessee brought Peyton Manning in, and uh, LSU brings Olivia Dunn in and her 4 million followers on Instagram. The American gymnast, a former USA national team member. Olivia Dunn in the house to see her. Tigers, who currently have a 2 0 lead over Wake. We've moved to the fourth inning. Harlow gets Cade Beloso to start. And he gets a strike call at the bottom of the zone. Beloso, the designated hitter, walked. It's been the difference in this game. Walks in a couple of misplays in the outfield. And that's pulled foul. Now, does he have his shades on or not? I even did those have said Things that make me speak Spanish. Beloso on the ground, fielded. Kurt steps on the bag. What else, what else gets you to speak Spanish? A lot of things, Carl, but that right there, that's, that's one. one of them. Give us another example. Yeah. Oh, it's just, it just comes out. I don't know. Just, we'll try to bring it out of here. See if we can do Please it. Please don't. <laughs> a little time. Please don't. She doesn't have her shades on either. Wow, uh -oh. yep, that was, uh -oh. a, that was a backhanded attempt to catch that ball, and the only guy that caught it was the home place umpire, Corey Moser. That would probably get you to speak Spanish. <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> uh, we just found another one. <laughs> See, it comes in handy. That's crazy. Five of 15 first pitch strikes so far for Hartle. He's given up just the two hits, and one that was one of those two was a ball that got lost in the sun to left. Two one to Dugas, and that is slick out. Whew. That was screaming to the LSU Tiger bench. Screaming. Two strikes. LSU 49 and 15 on the season, 19 and 10 in the SEC. And they have got six College World Series titles. Three, two, ball four, uncharacteristic walks. All right, let's go back to the top of the third inning, and this is what happens to Sari. Doesn't have the shades on. He panicked. That's complete panic right there. Going between, so in the dugout. Starts telling him his coaching staff now starts saying, okay, forget about it. That just happened right here. Don't take it up to the plate when you go hit. 
Only problem is he needs to get in a better angle. If he's not going to wear the shades, he has to get closer to the line to be able to then catch the ball when it's hit to his left and it be out of the sun. Hey! Strike one is Gilbert, the right fielder. The four walks, Kyle, for Hartle matches a career high. You seeing anything mechanically with Harlow coming up short? I mean, his misses have all been down. Basically, everything he's thrown today has been down. Whether it's a miss or whether it's a strike, it's been a, at the bottom part of the zone. He's lived there the whole day. To get Schaubert to do a little fishing. I do think sometimes, I mean, when you're facing an offense like LSU, sometimes you can try to be a little bit, a little bit too fine early and miss more bats than you used to doing. I mean, he's punched out five, so he's missing plenty of bats. Just hasn't been in a bunch of plus counts early. Held on to another punch out. A lot of walks and a lot of strikeouts. Five K's, four walks. This has been his best today. That's that's the breaking ball. And Gilbert got a piece of it, but Bennett Lee, the catcher, holds on to it. What's been his most consistent, and I think what he's been most comfortable throwing today is a curveball that time to get the left hand. Gets us to Jordan Thompson. Underneath the bat on all of them. I, would just, I mean, just keep leaning on that. Yeah. They, they have not shown the ability to, to hit it. I'm comfortable with it. Rake is so deep right now. They get the bullpen coming. Cold Roland is the first up and throw. A one to Thompson squares, lays down one. That's going to go foul. Thompson started 55 games last year at shortstop, all 62 for LSU. He was the second baseman seven times. Out of San Diego, California. Swing and a miss. That filthy slider picks up another punch out. Second of the inning. He's got six in the game. We'll talk it over with Tom Walter, the head man for Wake Forest, about what he has seen so far and what he'd like to see change. 2 nothing, Tigers. Yeah, he's been struggling with his command, obviously, four walks. We have a couple outfield errors. You know, ball in the dirt gets away from us, so we've got to got to kind of clean up the free 90s. Offensively, what adjustments you guys need to take in order to get some bats going against Floyd? Yeah, we need to get on top of his fastball. He's throwing the ball really well, and he's throwing good changeups to our left-handed hitters, so we need to be a little more selective and get on top of his fastball. The error in the outfield, we saw you guys come in and have a conversation. What is it about this team that you guys are able to really move on past some of the, the conversations that you have down here? Yeah, that's what good teams do. You know, you've got to respond to adversity. We face some adversity here early, but we'll be there. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, KB. Home team is Wake Forest tonight, and that fastball first pitch is in there for a strike. Bennett Kurtz, Wilkin, 2 3 4. He is absolutely dotting right now and keeping the ball down and out of those hot zones for these Wake Forest batters. 130 homers, 128 doubles for this offense. Everybody talks about their pitching. They absolutely can hit, but Floyd is doing a great job. Stay alive. He's been so good with that pitch tonight. We talked earlier. I mean, he's going to throw the fastball 75% of the time, maybe more so far today. But the key is the misses have been up, and that's that's where he wants them. If the misses start to push down. That's when that's when you can get floor. And that is into right. That's the first hit for Wake Forest. And 
dangerous part of this batting order. For Pierce Bennett, a single. Reminder, we will head over to ESPN2 if necessary on Thursday night. We give the stage to the 77th annual NBA draft. Best draft pop draft. The best draft prospect since LeBron is Victor Webanyama. He is a slam dunk first pick. Spurs go first. So they'll have another Tim Duncan for the next 15 years. Thursday, 8 Eastern, ABC, ESPN, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Hertz and Wilkin on deck both struck out their first time up. Oh, one sky high catcher coming back. Kravinsky. No. It's another life for Nick Kurtz. There are people on this staff who think Nick Kurtz is the best baseball player that they've ever had on their team. And they've been around baseball for a long time. So that says something given the season that Wilkin is putting together. 0 2. That ball got away, and it looked like it should have been a strike, but it went right off the glove of Travinsky and apparently called the ball. Yeah, Travinsky was sitting all the way outside. I think location's what got him. Watch where he starts and where he ends up. He's, that's about 18 inches off where Floyd was intended to throw it. You're right, Rab. I mean, still may have caught a little bit of the plate, but had to go so far, he's not going to get it. Let's see if it did. Well, it was a little in close. So, Kurtz 1 2, and this one is out of play. Charge a pass ball to Travinsky. Two swings. They've Floyd's been able to take it up a notch. Or do you go with the changeup down? I think he throws the changeup. Pretty fastball heavy. You give Kurtz enough of the same thing. He's probably going to get it at some point. If nothing else, just change eye level. Way outside. Kurtz and Corona were teammates in high school, and now of course teammates here. That was at the Baylor School in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And they were winning prep school championships, but said nothing compares to this trip. Three and two. And again, Brock Wilkin is on deck with his NCAA season high 31 homers. Got him chasing 95, Floyd. Went up the ladder. Strike out six, KP. Yeah, he got back to it. The fastball's been so important for Floyd today. Watch it carry, and I think, too. I mean, it's mid 90s. And just staying right where it starts. This was the last one we showed you. Just shy of 97 miles an hour, but look at the spin. Spinning at almost 2,500 RPMs. That spin is about 6% more than the big league average on the four seamer. He is intentionally living at that part of the zone. Has had real good success with it so far. Wes Johnson out now to pitch a coach for LSU. New head coach at Georgia. Yeah. Once this wraps up for the Tigers, however long that would be, he'll stay in the Southeastern Conference. But head on down to the Bulldogs. Amazing how valuable, isn't it, that pitching coaches have become. We've seen guys leave college programs, get hired by major league teams, come back to college. Did it again. I looked no, up, I, I was, thought it was, was Wes and it's Jay. I did it again. That's what I thought. I thought Wes Back cut to his back hair. times. One has hair, the other one doesn't. Now Jay's not leaving to go to Georgia. No, he's not. I'm I'm over to the entire state of Louisiana. Jay, uh, I told Jay that the other day. He said, Well, I'm the five six guy with him, not the five six guy without him. <laughs> Went over how to pitch this dude, Brock Wilkin, and outside is a start one and oh. And I think a lot of the message is just don't let this guy beat you right now. If he if he has to chase, so be it. You don't never want to put the go ahead run at the plate. But be very careful on how you pitch Wilkin. 
two balls no strikes it was about six weeks ago according to Wake Forest that Wilkin just absolutely locked in. And they rave about his maturity and development and what a leader he is and how he treats people. Hunk! At the letters so get that call two and one. See Cruz in center field. He's not playing too deep, and it's not because of the lack of power at the plate. It's because of the wind. Three balls and a strike. This is a kid that came in with all the promise in the world and wasn't exactly living up to it. Had some attitude adjustment that was necessary. He was the big man on campus, but wasn't living up to the role and this year he certainly has as he swings and misses three and two. Boy has Ty Floyd's fastball been a weapon tonight fastball changeup. Justin Johnson waits in the on deck circle big pitch to this guy on a three two. He's gone great job Floyd seven punch out. That's pitching right there, Ty Floyd tonight. I'll tell you what, Ty Floyd's now faced Nick Kurtz twice. He's now faced Brock Wilkin twice. Combined, they've hit 55 home runs this season, but combined today, they've struck out all four times. 3 2 fastball. And I think in that one, Wilkin, you, you're expecting everything to be up. Everything had been up. That one at the bottom part of the zone, and he punches him out looking. Spun one wide. Rare that you see a breaking pitch, but it was. Outside and it's one and zero to Justin Johnson. And it's out there at second base. And that's Tug two and zero. Wake would love to get it to Danny Corona, who's on deck, given how hot he's been with his 19 RBI last five games. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a little high. So it's three balls, no strikes. That's not high. No. That, that's a strike. Just relaying Corey Moser's feelings. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good relaying. <laughs> Only one walk in this game for Floyd. Justin Johnson is Corey Moser. Call oh, that one a strike. As a hitter, you just do not know right now. This is serve and protect as a hitter. Anything close, you better be swinging. Call hey. strike three. Well, half the crowd, or at least those wearing Wake Forest hats and shirts, did not like either of those calls, and certainly the Tigers did. He strikes out three in the you inning. Ty Floyd has eight in the game. Strikes out of Casey Moser's become an issue a little bit, certainly on the Wake Forest side. As Hartle's first pitch is inside for ball one. Fifth inning of this one. The winner will move one game within a College World Series final. An elbow lean in there couldn't get it now it is one ball one strike is it bent in for a strike Floyd's primary issue this year has been his breaking stuff which could be an issue he hasn't really had a throw in fastball change up tonight he has been dynamite with his eight strikeouts it's almost the same way that Stanford attacked the Dean and Deacons in the first game fastball change up most of the time and they're getting the same dosage here this evening. Two balls two strikes is Mike Buddy locked into this pitch right here. Oh yeah. Mm. Why don't you break the news to him. Oh, fun while it lasted buds. There's your single season strikeout leader. Right now that's not him he just struck out but Josh Hartle is now so 130. Nine strikeouts. Mike Buddy had 138 about 50 years ago. <laughs> Committee chair last year, athletic director at Army. Good dude, but no longer the strikeout leader. 
Dylan Cruz up the middle. That's exactly where Johnson was standing, and he fires over to first. Two up, two down here in the fifth. Well, Buddy held on to that for a while, and you know it, it felt like if Rhett Lauder gets back on the mound, it was absolutely going to go. It's our buddy Polly Griego and his wife Karen. A long time ago, in Rosenblatt Stadium, Polly's was the place to be. Now he's got another one of those in Exarbon. Right, is that hey, Nebraska backwards? Okay, nailed it. Nailed it. Like you've been here before. Tommy White, 5 3, and then a single. And that single led to the first run of the game. Hey! Tommy and Casey definitely aren't seeing. <laughs> they're just not seeing eye to eye. Tommy and Casey aren't going to break bread tonight, I don't think. Tommy is, is disagreeing with a few things. Hey! <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> but the last time that that happened, Tommy hit a ball 98 yeah. miles an hour. Rifled one into center field. Hey, sort of like that to left field. This went to the gap. It is cut off out there. Sasiri. Maybe this is a this is a Casey Moser and Tommy White game plan. They fire him up. He's getting him mad, and then Tommy White's taking it from there. Yeah, he gets mad, but one thing that he does do with two strikes, he spreads out. Oh yeah. Doesn't take that stride and trusts his upper body. Still using his legs really well. Stays back, and again another knock. He hits rockets too. 101 off the bat. Morgan. So a rare Dylan Cruz 0 for 3 night, but White's got two knocks. Hey! That froze Morgan, and he knew it too. He was looking, committing, and said, nope. Let's go try. There is the Morgan family. Anxiety just runs so high when your kid comes up. On a line to right, fielded, and that catch ends the inning. Morgan hit it hard. And they get that one. That's right. That was a good hit. That's the Gator story. Back here, Floyd's been the story as he deals with the DH Danny Corona. Touched on his parents, his dad, Danny Corona Sr., a Yankees scout. And he and his girlfriend at the time gave birth to Danny. He was just a teenager. They dropped out of high school to help support the family. He's playing career. Dad's was over at that point. But that commitment to education never went away. They got their GEDs and then went to college. So he coaches his younger brother, and then he coached his son. It's definitely a baseball family on a 2-1. That's outside 3-1. His dad said, we were kids having kids. And we had to stop going to high school to focus on that. Underneath this one towards the corner. Joe Bear going over, still going, and he's going to stop. So he wanted to play baseball, and his parents said, no problem. You're going to go to boarding school in Tennessee. 100% graduation rate from the kids in that boarding school, and get a different look at goals. So he had offers, right? Stanford. Yeah. Wake Forest, Vanderbilt. When he was 12, he was helping Team USA win a gold medal at the World Cup in Taiwan. 3-2. Chases, and my goodness, four consecutive strikeouts tie Floyd ninth of the game. This is as good as I've seen Floyd the whole year. And it has been, he's thrown the changeup some. He has lived on this thing. It's just grab the four seamer, live at the top end of the zone. He's allowed two base runners so far. Actually, only one hitter, but he reached twice. Bennett walked into first, singled in the fourth. 
That's it so far for Wake Forest. And Wake Forest too have had a bunch of pitching injuries themselves as this one is into center and there was no way that Cruz was going to be able to get that Bennett Lee is on with a single. But they lost Garrett Edwards they lost Chase Shores ACL Grant Taylor. You know and the point that they were making to us earlier today Skeens is so great. You almost forget how good other guys are on this team. Yeah. He overshadows everything. Well, I think, uh, like Floyd and most others, he was seven and zero with a four and a half. Like that's not a bad year. <laughs> but you compare yourself to that guy, who is the best in the country, and I, I don't, I don't know that there's any argument for that at all. Then that's, that's a tough one to compare yourself. But yeah, losing Shores and losing Edwards was a massive loss for this LSU team. Shores had started a few games, but was. Primarily out of the bullpen, Edwards out of the bullpen. They were their top two bullpen options. Lost them both midway through the season. So we're going to talk with Paul Skeens during our telecast. That'll be the next half inning. Maybe we'll get a scouting report on the other pitchers on this staff and where his head is at because he is the best pitcher we've seen in the college ranks. Would you say since Steven Strasburg, most dominant pitcher? He's the best I've ever seen. Better than trust. Yeah, I mean, at this level, at this age, at this time, I, I don't. He's doing. I don't know no that there's some giant difference. I've just, I've never seen anybody better than that guy at the college level. His fastball averaged 99 miles an hour the other night. There's another good fastball at 94. He threw 46 pitches over 100 miles per hour in a game. And you know what's crazy? His best pitch that night was his changeup, which is probably his third best. Over the course of the year, his, his changeup, he threw a ton of swing and miss changeups, both righties and lefties. One ball, one strike to Sasir, and we won't throw it there. Well, he was averaging like 5% in the season usage on the changeup. He threw that pitch 17% of the time in that game. How do you prepare for that? Well, you don't. <laughs> Another fastball at 94, and Ciceri is behind one and two. He was at Air Force for two years and then transferred in the portal to LSU. Did schemes. You can see how big his hand is right there. <laughs> Go back to that shot of Skeens. So is that a large water bottle he just crushed, or was that a small one? That was actually a gallon. <laughs> when it started. <laughs> yes, and then he's just right. destroyed the, the Poland, entire thing. The Poland yeah. Spring yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another strikeout. That's 10. Now, the, the crazy thing about Skeens, he was the John Olerud two way player of the year last year. He also hit and caught. Um, I, Kylie's as good as there is at what they do, but if you're the Pirates and you let that guy go at one, I, I just would be very surprised. No. <laughs> I just don't see it happening. I don't see them not picking him at one. Marrick Houston's up. And this one is hit to right field, but it's going to be playable for Chaubert. Another two strikeout inning. We'll talk with the king of strikeouts, Paul Skeens, as we continue the College World Series. His Tigers are up two zip. Welcome back everyone Paul Skeens hop skip and a jump a right arm fastball that touches a hundo every time he seemingly throws it and the most dominant pitcher as Kyle just said that he's ever seen at the collegiate level absolutely outstanding against Tennessee and an amazing season and now he's trying to get his team to a World Series title and then wait to see where his name gets called in the draft Paul Skeens joins us thanks very much Paul Carl Ravich Eduardo Perez Kyle Peterson up here we appreciate you doing this yes sir thank you for having me all right so let's talk about development here you know where, where you were and how far you've come because a lot of people are being introduced to you now for the first time on this stage tell them a little bit about your road to to where you are now yeah so I've always been a catcher always been a hitter um, I pitched for most of my life and then uh, probably my sophomore year of high school, I didn't pitch. Um, kept pitching my junior, or start, start, started back up pitching my junior year, senior year of high school. Um, and literally just went up on the mound, tried to throw the ball as hard as I can. Um, <laughs> kept doing that my sophomore and or my freshman and sophomore years at Air Force, and uh, learned how to pitch a little bit. Um, to, you know, when I was there, and then came to LSU, um, grew into my body a little bit more. Uh, 
got some new pitch grips and uh, figured out some sequence right, and so, stuff. So literally, that, the idea was I'm going to pitch and I am going to go and just throw it through a house. I don't care where. I just want to see how hard I can throw it. Who who was behind <laughs> that idea? Uh, my parents, for one. Uh, my coaches. <laughs> the, yeah. Um, my coaches um, knew kind of not to get in the way of it because uh, they knew that. You know, I was growing, uh, growing into my body um, and figuring out how to move. Um, and, you know, that, that really helped me just figure out how my body needed to move. Um, and, you know, just based on the task at hand, I was just trying to throw the ball as hard as I can and, uh, you know, figured out along the way yeah. how I needed to move to do that. Well, we were talking last night. I mean, you, your average fastball velo last night was essentially 100 miles an hour. Um, your average fastball velo this year is up almost five miles an hour over last year. So what is the growth been like for you since you got to LSU and how have you changed? Um, so like I said I've gotten stronger uh, grown into my body a little bit. Um, a lot of it has been sleep and recovery uh, nutrition um, and I've figured out some stuff some more stuff about um, you know how my body needs to move. Uh, so figuring out my sequencing uh, and figuring out um, you know where I mean where my chest needs to be at the right time and, and uh, that kind of thing. It was uh, a lot of it was based on uh, my chest. Um, that, that's what I think every day. Um, you know, when I warm up and uh, when but I got on the mound. And, uh, Holly, people at home who don't understand sort of what you're talking about. I mean, this is all about these labs and technology and camera angles and and biomechanics if you can simplify that for people because I know what you're talking about but help them understand growing into your body sleep it sounds sort of simple when it's really not yeah to be honest it is simple if you do it for a long period of time I think um, and so I, you know, I, I knew the importance of it uh, I, I think for, for a while for the second baseman and that is a hit for Beloso. Go ahead. Um, and, and honestly, I got some more resources that helped me yes. figure out uh, exactly what I needed to do uh, to move more efficiently. All right. So, Paul, first of all, what does it feel like to throw over 100 consistently, man? Because a lot of people that are listening, I, I'll go 99 percent of the people in this world don't know what you don't know what it feels like. Ninety nine percent. Ninety nine point eight percent. There's okay. a whole lot of ninety nine point and then a bunch of numbers after that. Sorry. Go ahead. It's pretty freeing to be honest. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's the first time you first time you threw a hundred. What did that feel like. Uh, I found out about it after the fact um, for one and uh, didn't really know what to think. I didn't think it would be I, I would I didn't think I would get a whole lot more um, and I didn't think it would be as consistent probably as it is now. Um, but it was, it was really cool to find out the first time and uh, honestly I've, I kind of just kept doing it. <laughs> do, do you ever take a peek? Oh, all the time. Oh <laughs> boy. Good. <laughs> I, I would peek every single time. Yeah. I, I would continue to peek. Hey, I saw something on the Twitter and, and I don't know if it's accurate or not so I'm going to ask you. Did you get a police escort to your room? Uh, because that's next level. No, I got it to the meeting room. To the um, meeting room. Okay. Yeah, just going Still. through the lobby. There were a lot of LC fans there. there. There's a few of those. They they tend to show up at things like this. What's that experience been like for you? It's been awesome. Uh, to be honest, I didn't take it in as much as um, I probably could have the other day. Uh, but I uh, today I've, I've just been trying to take it all in. I went to a game yesterday, uh, just trying to experience the whole thing. <laughs> and I mean this. This is really cool. This is everything I could have asked for. I'm sure you just fit right in. Like nobody knew who you were. Uh, you just sit down and watch the game, right? No, not quite. Oh. No, you. Where do you fit in? You don't fit in anywhere. <laughs> the LSU locker room. It's <laughs> <laughs> all that matters. But, but are, are you superstitious at all? Not really. I think there are probably things about me that other people would think are superstitious, but I do them, and I, I don't think I am. I mean, I wear stirrups every game I pitch, like. I don't know, maybe that's a superstition. Let's talk about the shoe game and when where you actually find your shoes. Yeah, so they I mean they just give us shoes here uh, and luckily I, I really like Nike um, which is nice. Uh, they fit my feet well uh, but aside from that it's, it's kind of tough and I have to do a little research. Um, it's nice because I get some discounts I think at a What's lot of places. What size? So what 15. size? 15. 15. Yeah. Three and two, and there's a strikeout. And look at that reaction from catcher Bennett Lee. Hey, Paul, how about the changeup last night? I mean, I, I've seen you a bunch this year, but I've never seen the changeup that good. And, and I, obviously, you get to the next level, that's when you're going to have to start using maybe a little bit more. Um, why was it so good for you last night? Yeah, I mean, that's a pitch that I throw a lot in catch play, uh, throw a lot in the, in the bullpen. That's something that I've had, I think, all year. 
um, to be honest it, it got to a the situation uh, the other night I had to throw it because um, they were going to be on on my fastball and my slider more than other teams I mean, that, that's why they're here um, and so I had to throw it um, a lot more than I than I've had to um, you know up to this point in the year and it, I mean it worked out pretty well are you aware of the strikeout record at LSU with Ben McDonald at 202 and you're at 200 I did I am uh, this one is hammered to right field off the bat of Bear, and it is going to be caught on the track. Finish your thought. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, people have told me a lot about that. I met Ben um, a lot. I mean, he's called a lot of our games. I've talked to him a fair amount. Um, it's cool. It's really cool. Hey, good luck the rest of the way. Can't wait to talk about you with the draft. I hope you yeah. go number one overall. I know you don't care. That's a political answer, but I think you should go number one. Thank you, sir. That's Paul Skeens, pitcher for LSU. Hope to see him in Seattle. Pirates are on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Great conversation there with Paul Skeens. We'll have much more to talk about with him as we get closer to the draft and even more this evening. Tommy Hawk will lead things off. Wake Forest down two zips. Sixth inning. Floyd has got 10 punch outs. He's been great. And they try now to jump on the first pitch and it's fouled off. That was fun. <laughs> that, was, that was fun, man. He, uh, he is a unicorn. He is. Actually, he's a giant unicorn. Yes. And there's a couple of them here. You know, Jack Caglione. Hey! Florida's another one of those guys who can throw 97. Size 17 shoe. Size 17 shoe. Hawk is behind 0 2. I think he just locked up his Nike deal right there, too. Yeah. Right there. And we did ask him, you know, we went to commercial. We just asked him because I'm sure a lot of people and coaches are wondering, like, the guy's throwing all those pitches that hard. Does he ever worry about the stress on his arm, you know, shoulder, elbow? And, and he said, right now he feels like his body moves well enough that he doesn't need to be overly concerned, but it crosses his mind. But he's had no arm injuries and issues. That's probably because he wasn't a pitcher. No, not full time. I mean, he hadn't thrown 100 innings in here until this year. 2 2. Hawk stays alive. You can see a little frustration from Floyd. Thought he had his 11th strikeout. I, again, I, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm sure the Pirates and every other organization have thoughts, and it has to do with how much money a player is willing to take. Do they take under slot or not? But there is a, there is a generational component yes. to Paul Skeens. There that's just is. I don't think he's I don't think he's taking under slot either. No. <laughs> no. Watch Pearson here in left field. Just come on in. Come on in five feet. Get away from that sun. Three two you got two strikes. He's trying to protect the plate. Challenge him to hit it over your head. Another one to the seats. Good at bat. This will be the last inning that the left fielders would have to worry about the sun. And the hitters as well. And I think this is where game on now, where the offenses should come to life. Looking for his 11th strikeout and will not get it. A walk to the leadoff, man. And 13 steals on first base. More coverage of the NCAA Men's College World Series Interactive Brackets, NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. It feels like maybe the inning here if you wait for us. You got two, three, four, you got your leadoff man on. He's the guy who is the real threat to run. If there is any on this team, they don't steal a ton of bases. And he not going there in the first pitch, misses. You got to focus on this guy right here on Pierce Bennett, especially with the storm that's coming up, up after him. Third time through the order for Floyd. Yes! And that one is sent past the first baseman and a big, big break. Hawk will put the brakes on at second as the ball is fired back in. But he was leaning. The ball was bounced over there. Morgan couldn't get it. And now Hawk in scoring position. Two 
two balls, no strikes. Kurtz, Wilkin on deck and in the hole. Second base is as far as anybody's gotten for Wake Forest. It was Bennett in the fourth. Yeah. Bill Johnson's getting that bullpen. Already starting to throw a bit, and that's exactly what he has to do. This he cannot let this spiral on Floyd right now. Third time around the order. Ackenhausen, Nate is warming up. That ball is going to be in there for a strike, and he's trying to warm up fairly quickly. Thatcher Hurd is the righty 26. Three balls, one strike. Bennett. Ball four. He has been pinpoint with his control. He has now walked a couple. Coming into this inning, the only walk was a one out walk to Pierce Bennett in the first. Bennett has now reached base all three times two walks in a single, three walks in a game for Ty Floyd. I would think he at least got to take a, a visit here just to let those guys get closer to being ready. Yeah, and his misses have been down, and you talked about it earlier in the game where once he starts pitching down, it's where he has to be more perfect. If not, it's going to start getting hit. Everything up so far with good spin has been fouled or swung and missed. What a spot here for Nick Kurtz. Look at the massive numbers he's got, and yes, Jay Johnson is coming out to talk to Ty Floyd. Taking him out. Not he would have kept on walking, right? Unless Agenhausen's ready. You got Kurtz from the left side, Wilkin from the right side. You kind of got to mix and match it after that. This is where this wig lineup gets scary. Yep. Tommy Hawk gets on good things happen. Bennett's done a great job of being patient tonight, but now you got two of the best hitters in the country coming up next. We talk a whole heck of a lot about the pitching lab. We asked Walter about it. You know, what are you going to do for your hitters? And clearly they don't need a lot of help, but they, there is money and they are looking into a hitting lab as well. Oh, it's coming. A couple of those popping up around the country, but. Keeping up with the Joneses, the pitchers, they're going to have a hitting lab. So here's Kurtz. Tugged inside, 1 0. Oh. I think he told him this look, this is your last guy. What's the message you would think he gives to his pitcher? I don't know if you go quite that far. I mean, I, I, I think some of it is just approach and what you've done the last two at bats to Kurtz, but the, the stuff has changed pretty quick for Floyd here. 1 0. Yeah. I would go get him yeah. right now. I, oh. I, I would not. I mean, he came until the setter's up. over just because it came in during this at bat. He came in before the at bat. 1 0 count. Yeah. No. Uh -uh. He came in before. Seven straight balls. You can read it on his face. Hawk is at second. Bennett at first. Nick Kurtz. Amazing how fast it can shift. I mean, first two times he threw the order, and they, they couldn't do anything. And now in this inning, Floyd just can't throw a strike. The wind has subsided a little bit. Not blowing in as much as it had been on a 3 1. Should get a good one here. Wow. Ball four. A couple of close ones called balls. They are loaded for the cleanup hitter, Brock Wilkin, and his 31 home runs. Three consecutive walks. Johnson is on the top step. Tough decision right here. You've walked three, but you've had Wilkins' number. 
He's got to go yeah. down. You had you had Wilkins number with different stuff. Yeah. Yes. And, Third time around the lineup, it's just a little different. Uh, he was asking, I believe, if that was a strike or saying that was a strike. Either way, he's out. He had one walk in the first inning, and then he ended up walking three in this inning. And in a lot of ways, it feels like the game is on the line. And Thatcher heard the righty is going to come on in to pitch to try to get out of it. He'll face Brock Wilkin with his 81 RBIs. Best chance of the night for Wake Forest and a huge pitching decision right here. Floyd is out. Thatcher Hurd is in. Jay Johnson has known about this kid since he was in high school. He really wanted to go to Arizona originally, and he was in love with the catcher at Arizona, Cesar Salazar. So he got a chance in front of Jay Johnson in high school to put on a show, and he didn't do great at the show. But when Johnson saw him throw a slider, he said, that kid's going to be a pitcher, and he's going to be a good one. The other kid that was attempting to impress Arizona's Staff as a catcher chose to go there. So Hurd didn't end up going to Arizona, but now these two are united, and Johnson calls on Hurd to pitch in a massive spot here in the College World Series. The second half has been better, and I know that the ERA was elevated, but it's still real swing and miss stuff. 71 strikeouts and 51 and a third. It's a mid 90s fastball. Can I get up? Show you some sixes and sevens. The slider is real, especially against right handers. Slider, according to his catcher, you know, if the thing breaks two feet, he says. The problem is, if he's going to rely on a fastball, the batting average against on that's three and a quarter, and a guy up smashes fastballs. And if you're the outfield right now, you have to know the situation. You're up two runs. Base is loaded. Do not necessarily have to throw the ball home. Keep the runner that's at second. At second, you can go to third and still have the lead 2 1. Have to be smart out there. Anticipate. Broken homer in his first game at the College World Series. And these are the type of moments that you live for as a kid thinking about when you go to college. I want to play in that World Series setting. I want the bases loaded. I want to be up. His team is down two zip. Tommy Hawk is the runner at third base after a walk. Bennett is out there at second. He walked. And of course, Kurtz just walked as well, which forced Floyd out of the game. Good high ball hitter. Fastball right back up the middle. That gets through. Here comes Hawk. Bennett breaks on. The throw comes in. They get one run on a Wilkin RBI. It's now two to one. And that was smashed. Nice piece of hitting, not trying to do so much. Just keep the line moving. Pitches right down the middle, a little down, and he hits it right where it came from. Good job by hitting the cutoff man. But Cruz right here, you said, oh. And yeah, Billy Salento almost went down. And I think that's where he lost that Cruz did the stutter step right there. Next up, Justin Johnson. There's that wicked breaking pitch, but it misses. 1 and 0. 76 runs batted in for this guy Johnson and if you pitch around Kurtz or Wilkin you end up having to deal with him and he's been very very good. That's a little better in there for a strike at 1 and 1. Yeah Wilkin hit that 111 miles an hour off the bat. It's a big man. That's loud. Slow roller up the middle. It is fielded and then fired to first double play. What an effort by Thompson. The run comes in to tie the game, but an excellent play by Jordan Thompson to get the double play. Well, the only way they're going to turn this is if Thompson takes it himself. Because watch where Dugas is. He goes all the way on the other side to second base. Thompson cuts in front. That is salty right there. Loves it himself and then jumps right over the top of the runner. Throw a little bit down, but that's. That's why you want Trey Morgan standing at first base. Really good communication. You see a lot of yeah. times the second baseman and shortstop not communicate and the ball just go through. Both of them. Can Danny Corona do it again? That ball gets away. He doesn't have to do it. It hit him. 
The runner will go back to third base. Corona gets hit by the pitch. Hertz was 20 feet away from being at home, Blake. And it got him right on the back of the foot. If it doesn't hit him, it's 3-2. Because Travinsky had to go so far from that, that ball's probably going to bounce over the top of his glove and go to the backstop. So Corona will not get a chance, but Bennett Lee will. He singled his last time up. New ball game now, 2-2, two, two, bottom six, like every other game at this College World Series. You know, the walks are what led to that number here in the sixth inning. Three walks, two have scored. Two balls and a strike. Bennett Lee taking me right back to my childhood. Joe Morgan from the left side, pumping that back elbow, making sure he keeps it down. Not as hard as Joe Morgan used to do in the day. Can't appreciate it from this angle, though. Subtle pump. Staying away from the fastball, but behind three and one. Go ahead, run. Kurtz is at third base. And that's inside. Another walk. Close pitches. But the base is reloaded after a walk from Hurd. Yeah. Strike zone has changed a lot during this game. It's big early, starting to get a little tiny right now. Different, a different ball game, and I told you guys, once those shadows go away, comes the hitter's advantage. Adam Sasiri, high ball one. Our earlier game today. The Tennessee bullpen was one guy, Chase Burns, who gave him six innings and struck out nine. All the injuries we talked about, significant to LSU, has really hurt the bullpen. The 1-0. It's a good pitch, 1-1. One one. This stuff plays, though. Yep. That's for oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, Hurd's been up to 97. The curveball's real, but... I throw it over the dish. The series got 10 homers on the season. That's high. And not close. Two balls and a strike. Nowhere to put him. Hard to watch if you're Ty Floyd. Two balls, two strikes, 95. Someone right now that wants to be able to produce for his team. It's Adam Ciceri. Lost that ball in the sun earlier. Trying to get that run back. Two balls, two strikes. Bases loaded, 2-2 two -two game. Swing and a miss and a huge, huge hold by Hurd after Wake had tied the game up. He gets the strike out of Ciceri. Three walks come back to Hottam. Two runs come in. A good double play in the middle. Turned by Thompson. New ball game as we head to the seventh in Omaha. Omaha, Nebraska, and everybody that has come to any game has been treated to an outstanding competitive showdown. Josh Hartle's night is over. 107 pitches, six innings, two earned runs. He walked probably more than he wanted to, four, but he did strike out nine. And he now holds the school single season strikeout record. Out of Duxbury, Massachusetts, 6'2", 210. The senior is Cole Rowland. And this guy's got four different pitches. As intense as a competitor as you will ever find on the mound. Animated. The strikeouts, too. 52 and 29 and two-thirds for Rowland. 
two different breakables, a changeup and a fastball. Tom Walter walked all the way out to the bullpen. I think some of that's probably just to say, okay, if in this situation, then you, you, and you. They get so many options out of that bullpen. A lot of places they can go, but they'll start with Cole Rowland tonight. That's Sean Sullivan. He's another one of those options. Does does the event does the scale tip a little bit now that we're tied in the seventh inning? Does Wake have a better core of relievers? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're a lot deeper. They're definitely a lot deeper. Lucas Costello is now playing left field. Cecilia is out. It'll be Jordan Thompson eight, Josh Pearson nine, and then back to the top schedule to hit against Roland. His first pitch is a breaking pitch and it misses. One ball, one strike. You're going to see a lot of those. It's righties this year is throwing the curveball more than anything else. It's left handers, he's throwing the fastball the least with his four pitches. So it is a whole lot of off speed. Brad transfer from Dartmouth, who didn't pitch in 19 or 20. And he goes right back to that, and it's in there for a strike. Injuries and COVID prevented him from getting on the mound in 19 and 20. Then the Ivies didn't play in 21. Right. You see a lot of guys bounce the baseball off the back of their hand on the mound. He does on the one two. See you later. So baseball all day and night. Next up Pearson. Kid from Dartmouth who sort of thrust into that environment of pitching labs and everything that he has the ability to learn about himself. Hey. You're going to see more of these grad transfers from the Ivy Leagues too, because in the Ivies, you can't play if you're in grad school. It's four years, that's it, and off you go. And, and so more of these guys, once their eligibility, at least within the Ivy League, is up. You're seeing at power conferences across the country. Big Michael Massey warms up. Oof. 83 mile an hour change up there. He hasn't thrown a fastball yet. And with that vertical break that he has on the breaking pitch and the arm speed that he has with the change up, why would he? Oh man. A lot of moving parts on a 1 2. Yes, sir. <laughs> Rolling back to back punch outs and we're flipping baseballs, gloves. This is beautiful. <laughs> a little fidgety out there. And of course, he's not wearing an undershirt either. I mean, that, that just kind of finishes the whole thing. Just give me the jersey. I'm going to bounce the ball off the back of my hand, flip my glove around, and not throw any fastballs. Back in the day, Brad Leslie. Pitching the big leagues. The animal. Yep. All I need is a jersey. It's all, no, just oh, the action stuff, just the whole thing. Here, yeah, let's cruise. let's it go. Juggling act and a pitcher. I mean, there's quite a bit going on out here. And he's got two quick punch outs. He's facing Cruz. Good take there. Slapping the rosin a little bit. Yep, all off the top of the hand a couple times. Chin rubs that left sleeve. And Roland is ready to deal with Dylan Cruz, one of the best hitters in college baseball.
2-2. Well, if you're looking for a fastball here, you're not going to get it. As a hitter, you have to still be aware of it, but respect the breaking pitch. This is high, and that will bring up Tommy White. You know, the other part, as you watch all of the gyrations that Roland does on the mound, we, we focus on the lab. It's not as if they're trying to make everybody the same. No. And I think that's a real important part of this. It's the opposite. Exactly. It's, it's trying to find what do you do best that maybe is different than what others do that arm slot looks like you or similar things. Now let's let's do more of that. I mean, they just brought a reliever in that punched out two. Then he walks Dylan Cruz. He in for one fastball because the off-speed stuff is that much better. So, back to the bullpen. That's not necessarily a bad thing if you're Wake Forest. Michael Massey makes his way, and the left-hander will be next up, tied at two in Omaha. Oh, stand deep in my soul. Something that you should know. Oh, I Don't you know, baby, I'm born for this. Yeah. 2023 College World Series has been everything as advertised. You came in with brand name programs and very, very highly rated prospects. Names that will be littered all over the draft a couple of weeks from now. And now it's turned over to Michael Massey. Sewanee, Georgia, 6'5, 230, big kid, the sophomore. One inning guy primarily. And again, ridiculous strikeout to walk numbers. Well, and, and look at the hits. I mean, he's given up like five hits per nine this year. He's punched out 71 and 38 in the third for Massey. It's a mid 90s fastball. Can get up 96, 97 at the absolute top end. And a big time slider. The swing and miss percentage against right handers is above 50 50 percent this year for both the fastball and the slider. That's how good each of them. We'll keep an eye on those. Dylan Cruz at first. He's now reached base safely in 69 straight games after the walk. And here's Tommy White, who's got two hits. Up the middle, off the glove. So Johnson has to adjust, and he will go and throw out Tommy White. That ball was deflected by the pitcher Massey. 6 5, able to get a glove on it, and that helps. 2 2, bottom seven coming up. Where were you in 1955? Well, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons baseball team was winning the College World Series. We had a couple of members in attendance. Danny Wexelman talked to one of them the other day, and he said about this team, you know, we used to hit the ball really far, just over the head of the infielders. This team hits the ball over the wall as often as we did that. And they certainly have done just that, but a rare appearance in the College World Series for Wake Forest. They were invited in 49 2 and finished runner up. Bottom seven of this one in a 2 2 game, and that one sailed way wide. Marrick Houston, number nine, and then back to the top of the order. Hawk and Bennett scored the two runs after being walked around. Ooh. Ooh, Houston badly as Hurd's breaking pitch started at his. Shoulder and he buckled. Not very different than a major league game. You see these power arms with all sorts of stuff come out of every bullpen. 96 at the knees. You ever catch Kyle and then say I want to be a pitcher? That's, that's what Heard wanted to do, and we obviously heard from Skeens. I'm tired of getting beat up. Oh, wow. he, he wasn't sure if Moser was going to call that a strike or not. Rubinsky did a good job. Watch how long he lets this thing travel. Watch the glove come all the way back into the chest protector just to try to yeah. make it look a little bit better in the home plate umpire. So 3 2, you don't want to walk the nine hitter. And he did. 
Carl, Tom Walter got some advice this week heading into Omaha for the first time from an unlikely source from former LSU coach Skip Bertman. The two became friends when Walter was at the University of New Orleans. He called him and he said, I want to make it very clear, I'm rooting for the Tigers, but here's what I can tell you about being in the College World Series for the very first time. <laughs> Well, he's going to give some game planning now to Hawk, who's up, and Houston. Yeah, it's interesting. Wake doesn't bunt a bunch. It's just 22 sack bunts this year. But Tommy Hawk, maybe a guy that you think would have done it. He's bunting for hits. He does not have a sack bunt this year. Tough guy to double up as well. So you don't know if they might even go for the hit and run. Guy, contact guy at the plate. Pull the slash out of your bag here. Well, the last time we saw a meeting between a coach and a hitter for Wake Forest, it was when Salento came down from third. He got in the ear of Corona in game one, and Corona then sent a shot up the middle after looking poor on the first pitch. That played to the two runs, which helped them win. See if this next conversation with Hawk, who does square, and he gets called strike one, pays off for him. Looks like a throwback, man. Amongst all these giants, five foot eight inches. A little low, and now he's looking over that LSU bench, and Johnson comes up to the top step after hearing some chirping. Well, that'll get the fans riled up even more. Casey Moser. 1 1. Two balls and a strike. Gavin Gidry, the righty. May Ackenhausen, the lefty, warming. Hawks move right there. He didn't look too comfortable. Huh? Usually the slashers don't. I mean, it, the hands all the way around the bat. He just he doesn't look like he's used to doing it. 2 and 1 in the air. Caught. And that didn't work for Wake Forest. You don't bunt a lot for a sacrifice during the regular season, but you do slash a lot and you do bunt and drag for a hit. It's a little different. The Hawk frustrated back. It's amazing, too, you know, if he had missed that a little more and got a little more on it, it would have gone over yeah. the head of the third baseman. And I get it, but if there's a runner at second, yeah, you bunt the third, but. With the runner at first. Just get it down. Just get it down to the pitcher or towards first, but not at third, especially with Tommy White just charging the, in. The movement of the bat and the way he was looking really the entire bag just he did not look like he was comfortable doing it. Houston not going at first, swing and a miss. And the conversation had to be about how comfortable you are doing this. And in a team environment in which they talk about being honest and being authentic raise your voice I don't want to do it you guys made the point he was not very comfortable I and mean, this is his 64th game this year I think coach I think all the coaches should know if he can or cannot by this time already yeah but you think most major leaguers can bunt and we've seen that can't happen either Time to go here. One and two. Houston's not fouled off. Wake doesn't run a ton, but when they have, they've been outstanding. They're 43 of 45 this year in stolen bases. One ball, two strikes. Shallow right. They were playing shallow. The second baseman's going to go out and get in front of Joe Bear. So Dugas makes the play. And just like that, leadoff man aboard and now two down. And now you don't go anywhere of your first space. Stay right there, Houston. Because LSU could have a problem with this big man coming up to the plate. This is Nick Kurtz. Strikeout, strikeout, walk. 
Wilkin had the single in the RBI. He's on deck. Seventh inning of a 2 2 ball game for Kurtz. <laughs> 95 by him, a little tail on it. Kurtz, a monster season, 364. 24 homers, 69 runs batted in. Back to back fastballs. Team All ACC and a Golden Spike semifinalist. He does not get punched out. It's one and two. Close pitch. A lot of umpires in the building right now. <laughs> that That's so in. much break. That one's in. Houston off and a foul ball. Field is very shallow in left and in center field. Yes, the wind is blowing in. It's blowing in a lot less than it had been. And there is plenty of room down that line in right. That misses two and two. A couple of very good fastball hitters here in Kurtz and Wilkin on deck if they get to him. Slipping out of his hands here, Kyle. Back to back pitches. Uh, under it. The rebel allows him to do something. Houston will be in motion right here. Kurtz gets one in the gap. Well, he's got a chance to take the lead. Three consecutive pitches that he lost up. And now it gets real dangerous with Brock Wilkin coming to the plate. Been their man all year. There's 31 homers tied with the Florida superstar Jack Caglione in the country. A Wake Forest home run record. Wilkin has averaged 400 this year on fastballs. Last time it was a fastball 100 and 11 up the middle. Be surprised if it's more breaking ball after breaking pitch. Well, Brock Wilkin opened the season with 12 homers in his first 15 games. He's tied for the National League. You got a base open, but you don't want to bring that go ahead and run 90 feet away with the arms that Wake Forest has. What would you think the message is here, Kyle? What is he saying? Uh, looks like he's kind of talking to everybody. I mean, it, it could just be scouting report, and this is what we want to stay with. Stay with Wes on this base on what he is, or, or maybe just a little pep talk here. We're one pitch away from getting out of this thing and let the offense go to work. And how about just saying also, there's a bag open. So you don't really have to give in to him. If he chases out of the zone, let him chase. We're okay with that. Picked up his 82nd RBI earlier. First pitch, slider misses away, 1 and 0. Marrick Houston, the go ahead run is at second base. Kurtz is at first. Mm. Hey! That one backed up on him. He went right back up the middle with a rocket the last time up. And right now, Ugas, the second baseman, is playing just behind second base, and he's not moving much. On that next pitch, he misses two and one. You have to give in here. You see where Cruz is, guys. This is one of those guys, even with this wind, that can hit it over his head. Hung a slider there. It's two and two. 
You know what pitch will work right here, KP? Another backup wrecking ball. Fastball in. Diving all over, out over the plate right now. All he's seen is the breaking pitch. Chased one. Heard throw him a slider down, and they got Wilkin. What a huge, huge spot Nick Heard delivered in. Granted some traffic, but Thatcher Heard gets himself out of it. Look at the grip on that slider. Get right over the top, strikes out one of the best hitters in the country. Wilkin has struck out three times tonight. It is seven complete here in Omaha. We're still knotted at two. Chris Button, Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Carl Ravitch. The bar is so high, and here we are living up to it again. And another night in Omaha. Trey Morgan. Michael Massey came on, got the last batter he faced. He'll get Morgan, Travinsky, and Beloso scheduled to hit. Ripped into right, watch out. Morgan to second base, it gets to the wall, and a leadoff double for Trey Morgan. Quick hands there from Trey Morgan. Fastball in, turns on and keeps it fair. As soon as he sees that it gets by Kirks, off to the races to get in scoring position and get the Tigers rolling. Yeah, you wonder, man. They had that opportunity, Wake Forest, with their best bats up and a big strikeout. And now Morgan leads off the top half with a double. Ball one, Hayden Travinsky. Travinsky couldn't get into the lineup. And then once he finally did, he's been explosive. 432 is the last 11 games of the regular season. And he had two homers in the regional final game. He's got 10 home runs and 92 at bats this year. Is that good? No, that's not great. Well. <laughs> Right now, he'd love to get Morgan to third base. Chase one there, 95. That was hard to hit. Massey is 6'5", 230. What does he do on one, two? Got him to chase another one. He stayed alive. Travinsky struck out, struck out, and grounded out to third. Got away with one there. Winner of this one to 2-0 and oh in the World Series semifinals. One step away from the finals. 1-2, Travinsky up the middle. And off the glove of the second baseman, Johnson. They will hold Morgan there. Johnson got to the bag the same time the ball did, and it was so slowly hit. Travinsky ends up at first. That's a heck of a job by Travinsky. Look, you have two strikes. You have to put the ball in play, and if you can, try to do it behind the runner. Does the job, and then the error by Johnson allows him to get the first, and now we get a pinch runner at first base, but Travinsky doing the job and getting Morgan 90 feet closer to scoring. Manassi is up in the Wake Forest bullpen. We got a pinch runner going in at first base. Jack Merrifield. First and third, nobody out in the top of the eighth inning. Manassi is hot.
Gara News. Gara has told us that a lot of times these conversations are not necessarily just about the guy on the mound it is around the entire infield and who wants it, what we can do. It's a much of a pep talk as it is about a reality slap. He will walk off. He will leave his pitcher in the game. Field is the pinch runner. He doesn't have a stolen base, but he's got a bit of a lead. And now it's Beloso. Misses with the first one. 161 at bats coming into this game. Beloso's only struck out 27 times. He's walked 29. Really good idea of the strike zone. Nobody out. Middle infield is back. Oh, no. Get in. Two balls, no strikes, and no swing. Dugas is on deck. He's walked twice and struck out. Morgan at third. It's a big pitch. 2 0 slider threw it exactly where he wanted to. And slider even on the outside part of the plate to the left there. Has straight top to bottom over. Third base fielded coming home and he can't get it out of his glove. Wow. The scoop is made. Ben at least scooped it after Wilkin couldn't get it out of his club. What a play by the catcher to slap the tag on Morgan and keep it tied. What a pick. The double pump at third. Well, the ball beat him. Yeah, you got to see if the Doug. tag got there. Yeah, you absolutely have. That is big time. Well, that's a great question now. Watch that glove go underneath the arm. Doesn't like, yeah, I don't think it gets his arms. It's where did he get him? Can't tell by these two angles. You got chalk flying up in the air. Okay, so we have the ball. Oh, wow. This is going to be really, really, really interesting. I think he's safe. Yeah. It's hard to tell when that glove hits his midsection because that's where the tag is made. I think he's safe. I think he's safe too. Another look. Does it get? Did, did, did he get the left knee? I there? don't think he or did. Right That's knee. why I think he's safe. I don't think he got the right knee. I think he got him later on. This is where you and I would have been out. Would have got our midsection. He's got an yeah. eight pack. <laughs> That's the question. A little bit did, more did he get that? In. Did he get the right knee with that glove? Somewhere in there with a from that line. angle from that angle. We cannot tell but there's an angle. This is probably your best look at that left knee. Right knee. Right yeah. knee also. Yeah, I think it yeah, boy it almost looks like he grazes it. Well those two angles you can't overturn it. I think that's the biggest thing is called. Yeah. I mean because the call is out right there. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that there's enough. To overturn it. If they'd have called him safe, I don't know if there would be enough to overturn. How about that guy? And the double pump couldn't get the ball clean yeah. into his hand. Well, at that point, I mean, once you commit for Wilkin, you got no chance to throw him out of first base anyway. So you no. might as well take a chance. But this is next level good because you got the runner coming right down on you. Morgan could sense that the ball was going to be there. Okay, so we're whiffing the first time. It's just whether or not he got that right name. And a hand followed right behind him. I, I think this one stays as the way it was. Now the other part of that great play by Lee is he was almost blinded because Morgan yeah. was almost in the way of the throw from Wilkins. So he just stayed down there and scooped it and give Morgan credit when I mean, he realized it's not a swim move but I got to get my hand over the glove which is currently on the ground. You, you practice a lot of throws at home plate when you're the catcher. You don't practice the one hopper from foul territory very often. That's a heck of a play right there by that man. Yeah, and, and again, what a huge call this is in the College World Series for two teams that are 1-0, and, and we have 
chronicled how important going 2 0 is. 2 0, you are in the king's chair. You, this, is, this could determine who's, who ends up winning the game. I think this stays as an out call. The call in the field of out is confirmed. The runner is out. LSU loses one challenge. I think you're right. If that was called safe, I'm not sure he'll return it. But the original call yeah. of out is made. And give Wilkin and certainly Bennett Lee, who was brought in this year as a transfer by Manassi, who said, yeah, that's the guy we got to go get. Let's bring him in here. And now it looks like Manassi is coming in to the game to pitch to his good friend Bennett Lee. They played youth baseball together. And man, oh man, for a College World Series that has had just about everything, add that to the book of 2023. Biggest play of the night, biggest play of this College World Series happens right here. Brock Wilkin double pumped and it threw one in the dirt. He spiked it back at Lee with an incredible scoop and a glove that apparently grazed the right knee of Trey Morgan, which prevented LSU from grabbing a lead. It's a heck of a defensive play. Do not panic. Wilkin did not. Well, here you go, the 29th now appearance for this guy, Cam Benassi, the junior, 6'2", 215, out of Tampa, Florida. He's only walked 10, 44 strikeouts. He's the one who said, who had the best stuff on the staff? Teddy McGraw, don't even ask. And this is a staff that is loaded with guys that have weapons. This is one of them. And this is a mid-90s fastball kick. Get up 96, 97, potentially 98 miles an hour for Manassi. He is their closer. 13 saves that leads it. Obviously not a safe situation. In at a big time spot for Michael Massey. It'd be by Bennett Lee dinner night tonight. That, uh, that's a hang a star on that play right there. I think this is a team that tends to do those types of things, right? We buy some people sneakers with some of our meal money. All you could ask for. There's one out, there's two on. Camden Manassi. We'll get Gavin Dugas. First and second. Tight slider, 0-1. Power in this guy's bat, 16 bombs, 43 runs batted in, 10 doubles. All for one with a couple of walks. To third, to second, to first, and a double play started by Wilkin. Johnson turned it, Kurtz caught it, and Manassi came in and does his job. It stays 2 2. Wow. First and third, nobody out. Catcher Bennett Lee bails him out. Then Brock Wilkin, who just made the throw to home, starts a 5 4 3 double play. Still tied at two. Dima Deacons coming up in the eighth. Take a look at that as the sun goes down behind the Bob Carey pedestrian bridge here. Great place to just kind of hang, chill, watch the river underneath you. Look over at this beautiful ballpark all lit up. And what a game we have again, man. LSU and Wake Forest. It is tied 2-2. A terrific defensive stand. And the closer, Manassi, gets the double play ball he needed. Justin Johnson will lead things off. And that first pitch from Hurd is in there for a strike. Johnson made a heck of a play at second base. It wasn't a terrific feed from Wilkin. But he was able to turn it. Johnson, Corona, and Bennett Lee do up this inning. Hey. On the corner, 0-2. Oof. That ball went off the catcher and actually landed like right over the mound. Catcher Hurd was looking down, looking for another ball, and just about got domed. 
You don't expect to hear heads up nope. when you're on the mound on nope. that one. Alex Malazzo is the catcher now behind the plate. He's taken Travinsky's spot. He held it, waiting for the call. He didn't get it from Moser. Play of the game, Wilkin throwing it to Bennett, slapping the tag on Morgan to keep it tied. 2-2. Two -two. Call strike three. He thought about swinging at it. And Justin Johnson is retired second time he has struck out tonight. Thatcher Hurts had the A stuff today, man. This is the slider. Alex Malazzo, who is a regular catcher for a fair amount of this season for LSU, but he's been back there plenty. Comfortable in that spot, frames it up to get the first out of the eighth. Bird now gets Corona, who got hit the last time up, and he was ready to swing, and the fastball went right by him. Inside fastball at 94. Swing he made the other night against Stanford, which led to a conversation. He said, "Let's go back up the middle. We just need a ball up the middle to get one run in." He ended up hitting a single. No meeting this time. 0-2. That one is laced, and that's going to be a fair ball. Corona will head to second base. He'll check the outfielder. The ball comes in. He's at second with a double. And after getting beat by two fastballs, he threw him an 80 mile an hour. Fish over the middle and he cranked it at 102. Did him a favor. Late on the 0 1 pitch with the fastball, you could climb the ladder and go with another 94 up instead. Threw him a hanging breaking ball, most likely intended to be in the dirt. Stayed up. That man right there taking advantage of the situation once again. Big hits this postseason. And here's Bennett Lee involved in the biggest play so far. Strike one. Transfer portal is a massive part of college sports, and this was the guy they got. 0 oh and 2. Former catcher at Tulane. Interesting when they were talking about Bennett Lee coming in when he came in. Now almost immediately he became a leader on this team, which is exactly what you want back behind the dugout. That doesn't always happen with kids out of the portal, especially when you've got some there that have been there for a while. Will Salento smiling had to put the helmet over his face. Didn't want to show everybody how much he was smiling right there. Lee's become such a huge part of this team. Oh and two. Lays off it. Another big, big hit for Danny Corona here at the College World Series. He's out there at second base. The go ahead run. 1 2. Got one to hit. He puts it in the left field. Corona did not get a good jump, but he's winding in, and he will score. RBI for Bennett Lee. It's 3 2, Wake Forest. Almost as if Salento and Bennett Lee knew something with the smile before the at bat. That changed the game. How about this slider stays up again that secondary and Lee. It's and see Tommy White right there. He's like no I can't go after that one. The outfield playing deep. On this one no chance at all to get Danny Corona at the plate. And Wake Forest once again coming from behind. 
Same guy involved in it too. Corona, 3-2 Wake. Lucas Costello got jammed on that one. Well, Bennett Lee, the star of the night, with the scoop and the tag, and then the go-ahead RBI in the bottom of the eighth. Hey! Can't wait to hear what he has to say about that conversation if this game ends with Wake winning. That one's high. I'd say one thing. Sorrento's got a little magic touch because it worked say, the other night that's with the Corona. Key. That's all you got to do. Pick your spots. Let's talk to Bill Sorrento standing down at third base. That'll get you a knock. Done right here. Fastball goes right by Bill Sorrento, who has been with Tom Walter the entire time. They've both been at Wake Forest. Costello gone for a punch out for Hurd, and that gets us to Marrick Houston. So fascinating, isn't it? Again, you don't know how this thing plays out, but you've got a player on your team who knows this kid, Bennett Lee at Tulane. We need a catcher. They get on the phone, and lo and behold, Lee could be a huge, huge factor in winning the school's first World Series since 55. A whole bunch has to happen, but you never know in the moment what a phone call like that can do. Two balls, no strikes to Houston with Hawk, the leadoff hitter, on deck. That's in there for a strike, two and one. Catcher Bennett Lee placing Danny Corona. Wake Forest three outs away from getting their second win. 79 do up. Here is Scott Van Pelt looking forward to it. Two hours. Usually you say pump the brakes. In this case, take the brakes off. And that's how this College World Series has been, man. Full steam ahead. And another great one tonight. Wake Forest now with a lead 3-2. If they hold on, it'll be their second comfort behind 3-2 victory. They got their closer on. And the eighth inning has been magical so far for Wake, but not an easy out. Joe Bear leads things off. What? Tigers just want to get one guy on so they can tip it over to Dylan Cruz at the top. 2-0 to start. He loves that slider, and Joe Bear could be standing there 3 0 right now. Got a little jumpy 2 0 and swung the one that was way out of the zone. 2 and 1, here we go. <laughs> yes, that did catch the play. It wasn't where Lee wanted it, but it is a strike. It's 2 and 2. Again, these two, guy on the mound, Manassee, catcher Bennett, best friends. And it was he who said, get, get Bennett Lee, bring him here. <laughs> Strike three fell down on the mound and picked up the strikeout. I think that 2 0 slider confused him completely. After that, was not looking for it. That's the number one. Too close to take. Could have been in a little bit. Through in Baton Rouge, no doubt that ball was far in. But here in Omaha, strike three. Jordan Thompson. Fouled off the lead. Okay. 
No, nope. down one ball, one strike. Now both starting pitchers, if you think about it, Kyle, kept Wake Forest in it, even though they didn't have their A stuff. Louder and Hartle tonight. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, that's what they've done all year. That's why they've been so good. The advantage that Wake has is they can go so deep to so many different arms in that bullpen that even on nights like that, when your starter doesn't work into the seventh or the eighth, you just keep the line moving and keep bringing them in. One and two. One out away. A little dance step from Manassi. Pearson can get on. Dylan Cruz is up next. Oh, and one. Score two in the bottom of the six, one in the eighth, and again come from behind to get the W here in Omaha. I think if you're LSU, you can look back at that sixth inning. Walk, walk, walk to start it. One of those three walks, two of them scored, and then Bennett Lee, you had yourself quite a night, buddy. You Big time defensive play at the dish, and then the game winning hit in the eighth inning. Like quite quite a 15 minutes. Yeah. You get meal money tonight. Watch Manassi for a second. He thought about taking it himself. Then something fell out of his back pocket, his pitching card. Now we got shirts unbuttoned, and Wake Forest, like Florida, improves to 2 and 0 at the College World Series. Their pitchers tonight struck out 13 LSU batters. 13 Ks for LSU tonight. And for a team, guys, that comes in with this great reputation as Wake Forest. Three runs in two games. Yeah. Their pitching has been the difference. Our Capital One rewarding performance belongs to Bennett Lee. Bennett Lee did it defensively, and this was a big one. Not only did it save the go-ahead run, but it also motivated the, the Demon Deacons. Great pick, great tag, had to be reviewed. And then this big game-winning hit. Hanging slider shoots it out to left. Danny Corona had reached on a one out double. He comes in to score, and that's all the nation's ERA leaders would need today. Let's go down to the field. Here's Chris Button. Ben, and let's start first, top of the eighth. The play that you made at the plate. Brock Wilkin loses it in his glove. From your perspective, how'd you make the play? Yeah, Brock did a great job staying with that ball. It was like a cue ball spinner. Um, and he did a great job just to even make a play at home. And then, you know, I've done a ton of training on picks, and, and it just took over. Let's go to the bottom of the eighth then. You're up at the plate. Will Salento calls you over. You have a conversation. The next pitch, you drive in the game-winning run. What did he tell you? Yeah, I, I actually called the timeout just to just to slow down. Billy's like a father figure to all of us, and I wanted a little bit of comfort there. Um, and, and he just told me to, to just grind and find a way, and, and luckily we got it done. Watching you guys in the dugout, you're constantly dancing, constantly cheering. What is it like to be a part of this team? Oh, it's really fun. Um, we have a ton of fun the whole time, and that's what it's really about. And in these big moments, you can kind of get lost in that. But, but trusting in God, trusting in each other, trusting in our, our family is what is what makes us get it done. You made the biggest moments on the biggest stage, and that's why you came to Wake Forest. What's all this like? Thanks. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a dream come true. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. Thanks so much.